What's up everyone? So today we're going to embark on a city to city ride. I've got a pretty long adventure ahead of me today. So I've been coming out to Johnstown, Pennsylvania on the weekends to ride my bike where there's a lot more gravel, bigger climbs, more adventure type riding. But I live in Pittsburgh. So when I originally came out here, I rode out here over the course of two days and spent a night in Blairsville, Pennsylvania, which allowed me to make day two a lot harder. However, it is fully possible to ride from Johnstown to Pittsburgh or vice versa in one day. So today I'm going to attempt that. It's gonna be about 75 miles or 120 kilometers and about 4,500 feet of elevation, which is about 1,500 meters of elevation. I've got a big day ahead of me, but thankfully it seems like most of the climbing and most of the dangerous roads have been front loaded. So I'll be dealing with them in the morning and hopefully the ride will get better as the day progresses. We have set off on what is going to be one of the longest and probably hardest rides of my life. It's about six in the morning on Sunday here in Johnstown. Thankfully tomorrow's a holiday, so I'm hoping that traffic this morning should be extra light. It's been fun coming out here on the weekends, exploring uh, less urban terrain. But uh, it's time for all that to end and time for me to ride this bike home. Very quiet this morning. It's barely the break of dawn. I can just see the sky starting to light up. And I'm currently riding on a state route, but I've seen maybe five cars since I got moving. Well, I'll make that number six. And number seven's coming up behind me. to take this road pretty far out of town. I'll be on here for a while. So I'm hoping that traffic remains this light. Well, this is pretty. So we've definitely got some daylight now. I'm standing at a scenic overlook slash war memorial. There's flowers for every single war the U.S. has ever fought here. Um, back behind me, this is Rager Mountain. If you want to see what it's like at the top of this mountain, there's a couple videos from my rides last weekend. There's a Lay's truck. Gotta get those Lay's. And over here, we have Laurel Hill. And thankfully, going out on this road is going to help me bypass having to climb this beast back here. But I am a little worried. There's a sign right over there that says aggressive driver, high crash area. So I'm hoping to get off this road as soon as possible, but I left this early and chose this day in particular because I was hoping there'd be very little traffic and there is next to zero traffic on here, particularly no truck traffic, which is one of the things I was really worried about on this road in particular. So I'm going to head off and check in later. So this is pretty neat. Uh, looks like it's some kind of mountain spring, but uh, you probably couldn't pay me to drink this water. All right, so in this little power line gap between the trees, you can see the river down there, as well as a forest of knotweed, all the way up to the top of Rager Mountain where you can see the supports. I was up there last week and disappointed that I couldn't see down to this amazing view. So my GPS has put me on an unexpected detour away from Route 56 onto this uh, scenic wooded back road. Let's see where this takes me. Certainly not upset to be off of a pen dot road though. I try to avoid riding on pen dot roads as much as possible. Basically Sunday morning at dawn is the only time I feel that's actually acceptable.
there's at least three different for sale signs here with three different numbers on them. I'm just gonna drop this on this knotweed because I hate it. Yo, check out that little hut looking thing down there, right next to the railroad. It's clearly abandoned, but like, there's an air conditioning unit in the window, so it can't be that old, right? wonder what that was used for. I escaped from the PennDOT road, and now I'm into what looks like logging country. It's pretty nice, pretty scenic back here. I think this is going to be an 800 foot climb, and I'm not really looking forward to that. So it's going to be time to just find a rhythm, stick to it, get to the top, don't go too hard too early. This ride could take me as long as eight hours and I need to pace myself. We are progressing up the climb. There hasn't been a single car, which is nice. Really keeping a lid on it. Haven't really gone over 200 watts, but this section's getting a little bit steeper. So hopefully I can keep it low. So the climb continued on to this less scenic, more traveled road. I need to keep my ears open here. There's not a whole lot of shoulder, but there's enough for me to slide onto when a car approaches behind me. And the speed limit's 45, so vigilance. I gotta say though, it's probably the least traffic I've ever seen on Route 22. We've got sunrise and mountains, and to the left, you can't see it from here, but we have Pittsburgh. Alright, crossing this bad boy, not taking any chances here. No traffic in either direction. Thankfully, there is this hidden parallel street here. And this will hopefully help me avoid riding on 22. I think I'm gonna get lucky. I felt like I was gonna die the last time I crossed that highway. particular road I got attacked by four dogs, one set of three, and then one solo further up the climb. Thankfully this time I was going downhill and though I heard a dog bark I was going pretty quick and managed to get out of there. So I've made it onto the Ghost Town Trail which is a rail trail You can see behind me, it's nice limestone. I've been on this trail once before and I recall it being really nice and I probably won't see anyone else. So I'm gonna put my headphones in, listen to an audio book until I get back on the road for a while. Then the headphones definitely come back out. I am absolutely loving the shade of the water down there. Holy crap. That's so awesome. Yeah, the Ghost Town Trail runs parallel to this as far as I know, pretty much the entire way. How much dynamite do you think it took to blow this apart?
more than a lot of the other rail trails that I've seen, the Ghost Town Trail actually seems to have a lot of relics of the old rail lines, just kind of on the side here. Seen a bunch of stuff like the wooden railroad ties. And you know, I'm not exaggerating at all when I say that like the last mile of the ghost town trail in this direction, there's just a whole load of old train cars all rusted out here on the side of the trail. Pretty nuts. This can't have been the right way to dispose of this stuff. Black Lick Creek. So I'm off of the Ghost Town Trail now, and I'm scooting onto the Hoodlebug. I'm not sure how long this goes for. I know if I were to take it in the direction behind me, I'd end up in Indiana, Pennsylvania. Moving right along. So I've already passed an abandoned Sunoco. Now we have an abandoned Exxon station. This one still has the building. So I'm about three hours in right now, and I actually just passed somebody with a Confederate flag, which means that I saw a Confederate flag before I saw the first Biden sign of this trip. I really enjoy roads like this. A little tree canopy, lots of shade. Undulation, some up and some down. This is the kind of stuff you don't really find in the city. If I were in the city, I would have ran into like nine stop signs by now. Just came over a really steep climb. Chip Seal is not my favorite road surface. Don't worry, I know exactly where I'm going. I have so many questions for Kamut. None of which this service will ever answer. However, this at least looks a little bit better than riding right next to some train tracks. So, uh, road surface plants, I take it. Let's see what's up. All this to avoid a tiny little stretch of road. I really don't understand you, move. Alright, so after that brief detour, I've made it onto the West Penn Trail. Now this should carry me pretty much all the way over the Connemaw Dam and connect to the Westmoreland Heritage Trail which will then help me get back into the Pittsburgh metro area. So it should be a good ride from here on out. 
Um, I'm gonna take another stab at the headphones. Hopefully I have cell service here because I'm probably gonna be on this trail for an hour or two. There is one part where there is no trail and you have to go up and over a hill where there used to be tunnels uh, for the rail lines, but they had to block them off and I'll cover that later. This section of trail all the way out is one of the most scenic that I've ever run into here in Western Pennsylvania. It crosses the Connemaw River, I kid you not, five separate times. If you wanna see the full video of it, I have it on my YouTube. It's about, I wanna say 15 to 20 minutes long. And you can see all the river crossings, everything. I don't have the battery life to film the whole thing today. Gosh, uneven surface. Okay, so clearly a train line used to go through here and you can walk right up to them. Echo! Yeah, you can't really see it, but if you look far enough in, there's a solid wall of concrete deeper into this tunnel. So because there's this tunnel here, I obviously can't keep going forward. I'm not sure where this thing to the left ends up going, but the official route takes you up these steps. So it's time for a little bit of hike-a-bike. Just had a conversation with a guy. It was quite pleasant. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to carry my bike up these stairs. So fun fact, the last time I came through this place, I got lost because it's not exactly well marked where you need to go at the top. And I kind of just had to hike looking at the route for my GPS and kind of just heading in that direction. I think I tried to ride down this particular section at one point. And it seems fine until you get to like these roots here. To the Bow Ridge section of the West Penn Trail. For the next five miles, you will be off the rail grade and will be ascending and descending significant hills. Please consider this elevation graph and map before attempting this thorough passage. Looks good to me. Okay, so we're looking at the Connemaw Dam now. Uh, I can see a walkway across the top of the dam right down below me, but it's locked. So I gotta go all the way around. This would be so much easier if I could just go across the top. This dam descent. I'm not sure if that's dam with or without the end. Here's one of the tunnels. In 1854, this line was begun as the Northwestern Railroad. It was to be the main line from Philadelphia to Chicago, bypassing Pittsburgh. Following bankruptcy in the Panic of 1857, the line was reorganized as the West Penn Railroad and was completed when the Civil War ended. The tunnel is plugged with a concrete stopper, 20 feet thick, that prevents the lake at the other end of this tunnel from emptying through this drain pipe and so bypassing the flood control dam. So basically, that's why I just had to go over that hill. So this is a different tunnel altogether and you can see they actually left the rails in this one, which is pretty impressive. It says 1907 at the top. There's actually like a uh, Keystone logo. You probably can't see it on the camera. 
Bow Tunnel 1907, Connemaw Division, Pennsylvania Railroad. In 1950, when the Connemaw Dam was being built, these tracks were relocated onto the street bridge above to elevate the roadbed above water in the flood control reservoir located on the other side of the hill. The tunnel is plugged with a concrete stopper two feet thick, which prevents the lake from emptying through the drain pipe and so bypassing the flood control dam. Interesting that this one says two feet and the other says 20 feet. Curious about that. I wonder if that's a typo. Road ends in water. That has got to be the most ominous road sign I have ever seen in my entire life. I'm on the other side of the Connemaw Dam now. And there's this little history box. So I'm going to press the history button. This thing takes forever. As a result of the St. Patrick's Day flood of 1936, the Flood Control Act was passed by Congress, authorizing the construction of Connemaw Dam. Construction began in 1949. The dam became functional in 1952. However, September 18, 1953 marks the official dedication and entrance into service. Construction costs totaled $46.2 million, which included land acquisition and the relocation of railroad tracks, utilities, and highways. Panama Dam is one of 16 flood control projects operated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the Pittsburgh District. So I think the craziest part about all of that is right at the start, they said Congress passed a law. So I've got off of the West Penn Trail for a little while. This is the way that Camus likes to send me. Um, I do know that there's a lot of elevation and whatnot in the section of the West Penn Trail that I'm skipping. This is going to bring me onto a road that I believe is called Cold Town Road. And then I'm going to get on some gnarly gravel and then I'll be back on the West Penn Trail. This is one of my favorite sections of rail trail in Pennsylvania because aside from that cell tower in the distance and you know the trail itself there's basically no trace of human activity here. This is really remote you can hear the bugs chirping in the distance. As I walk through this little patch you see all of these grasshoppers just flinging out. Beautiful section of wilderness out here. So I forgot that this part of the Westmoreland Trail has a bit of an incline to it. Currently on a 3% grade. It's been this way for a while. We'll probably continue for a while. But that's okay. I'm in a nice, good, steady rhythm. About 45 miles in, which means maybe 30-ish till I get home. Make a good pace. Don't feel like I've blown anything up or anything. Just gonna keep chugging along. Finished with the climbing on the Westmoreland Trail, at least for now. My legs felt pretty good until that. My quads are definitely starting to complain a little at this point. But it's all good, and 
I have a little bit of a character chase because I plan on stopping out of Sheets when I get to Murraysville. We'll get that carrot. We'll get that Sheets. Road connection over. Back on the Westmoreland Trail. I'm a little worried because my Garmin just sent me a low battery warning. Which means it's probably not going to make it all the way back to my house. Hopefully I can find a way to charge it at Sheets, but if not, don't think I'm going to have power numbers for the last of the trip. Probably just going to have to record with my phone. Worst things have happened. So I'm at the Sheets in Murraysville. Got myself a half buffalo chicken sub. That should pull me over till I get home and a Red Bull has picked me up. And I even found a spot to charge my Garmin. So once that gets a little bit of juice, I'll roll back out of here. Just left Heats. Got some food and some Red Bull in my belly. Looking at maybe 20 miles till I get home. I've always found trail etiquette on this particular trail to be bad. Coming up on the left. Okay, so that was a perfect example. That guy didn't move over at all. This is an enjoyable part of the Westmoreland Trail. I've got Turtle Creek to my right, flowing ever so gently. Or Turtle Creek is the local dialect. Gotta call it a creek. Not a creek, it's a creek. E, e becomes I. I'm gonna follow this trail all the way until Trafford. Then I believe I have to ride through East McKee Sports and then Braddock, and then I'm gonna hop on the Rankin Bridge and transition my way back to where I live. Sounds like a plan. This is an epic graffiti tunnel. Nice. Just crossed the line into Allegheny County. I am technically in Monroeville now. Working my way ever closer to home. Don't tell anyone. This road is closed. Hush, hush, hush. Very quiet. Wait a second, it's the Sunday before a holiday. Ain't nobody here at all. Imagine if Arlington Avenue down Mount Washington was cobbled. That would be one hell of a descent. Honestly, is this necessary? Ugh. The last thing I need is more climbing. Fuck. Now on Braddock Avenue, getting closer to home. This isn't exactly where I would want to ride, but anywhere else would have just added way too much to the ride. Given the choice between cars and cobbles, to me, this is a no contest. Cobbles all day. Lincoln uh, 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 Bridge now. Barely avoiding a sign. I'm crossing on the sidewalk because there's just a little too much traffic right now. I don't feel safe on the road. Sue me. Seeing lots of bikes down here today. That makes me happy. I'm on the 
Glenwood Bridge now, and Balm is just on the other side of the bridge here. You know what that means. We made it! I'd like to thank everyone for watching. It's a little over a week later now, and I finally put all the clips together into a video, and it ran for over half an hour, which I didn't expect it to be that long, but I didn't really want to edit out any part of my experience. Um, shout out to Hope Cyclery in downtown Johnstown. I stopped in there while I was there, and they were really cool. Uh, gave me some tips on some good routes and whatnot, so I just wanted to give them a little thank you. And I just really appreciate you sitting through half an hour of me talking to you and showing you my bike ride. Much appreciated. See you next time.